Hello my loves, welcome back to Zeke's Lunchbox. Today we're going to go through the Clip Studio paint brushes, some of my favorite brushes. This isn't necessarily a top five or listicle or whatever. It's more just taking you through all the brushes that I use when I'm making an artwork like this or like this. And hopefully through this video, you guys take a tip or two away with what brush to use. I know on Clip Studio Paint, the names can be very deceiving and although I do recommend, you know, using them for their intended purpose, like pencil, brush, watercolor brush, oil brush. Those names do represent what they are used for, but I still use paintbrush for sketching and sketching brushes for painting. I just feel like if I show you guys the brushes that I like to use, and then maybe you can find that they are of use to you as well. Before we head into the video, I want to let you know for everybody who is a avid Zeke's Lunchbox follower, we have our very first Kickstarter running on the 25th of November. Fingers crossed the campaign gets approved and we can stick to that date. I have been working on building the page there and working on the campaign video as well on the Kickstarter. So I will pop that over on the end of the video. Everything should be timestamped as well. So yeah, please watch till the end if you are a tarot card supporter and you've been following the project for quite some time. It's a really good opportunity for you to watch at the end of the video catch up on the project and also support when we launch the Kickstarter on the 25th of November. Fingers crossed everybody give lots and lots of positive energy. Before we head into it make sure you subscribe and like. If the button down below there is red make sure you click it and turn it grey <laughs> so you are subscribed and if you get any value out of the video make sure you head over and like the video as well it really helps out my page. We are almost at 30,000 subs so let's do it and subscribe. I want to get there before the end of the year. Fingers crossed yet again. Let's head into it. Okay, so we are going to dive into Clip Studio Paint. Have my artboard all set up already. Uh, I have just put a little background of pink on there just so, let's be honest, to make it a little bit more aesthetic, but also just painting on something that isn't white. You'll be able to see the contrast a little bit further and makes the tones just look a little bit more nice. Let's just put it that way. So I am very new when it comes to digital work. I've really dabbled here and there. I wouldn't consider it my number one strength when it comes to making art. I still think there's a lot of things for me to learn, but in saying that everybody is a beginner at some place, and I feel like this video is really useful for people who are trying to dive into Clip Studio Paint. They're not really sure what brushes to use. The thing is with digital work, you just have so many different options. It can be really overwhelming and very scary. A video like this may help you make a couple of decisions so you don't have decision fatigue. Cut out all the things that you don't necessarily need at that moment. So I'm hoping this video helps you with, you know, making those decisions. Okay, so I will be taking you through brushes that I use pretty much in the same order when I am making artwork. So I'll use my sketching brushes and then placing down my colors. Also the brushes that I use to blend and then also brushes to clean up. Hopefully that takes you through the whole progression of what brushes you need when you're making art. The thing is with Clip Studio Paint is the brushes that it comes with are actually really good, very similar to Photoshop or procreate. The brushes still work and they do their job. I haven't felt the need to download more brushes just yet. I have found that on procreate I needed to download brushes very quickly. On Clip Studio Paint it's been okay and I've I've been really liking it. So I like to use the quick keys, so I use A and S. Can't remember if I've changed them because all the quick keys are different to Photoshop, but I press A for pencil and then S for brushes. Here we are in the pencil section, a real pencil, a design pencil, and a darker pencil. If you're brand new to this, you might think, oh, let's just dive in straight into the real pencil. That makes the most sense. For the most part, it does the job. It does feel like a real pencil. It's got lots of different weights on it, which is really nice and you can get pretty pretty heavy as well. So you know if you want that really textured natural pencil feel, I think it's fine. Personally, I haven't been finding that I reach towards it for this particular need, but I do use it for something else coming up. Designer pencil is the same, a little more dense. So if we zoom in, you can see that it has all the nice little grit in there, you know, which is good for sketching. And if you want that natural look, the real pencil has a nice spread uh, in between all of the strokes. These two brushes are not 
the brushes that I like to go to when it comes to sketching. And then the one that I might lean more towards is darker pencil. It doesn't have that gritty graininess to it, but I do find that, you know, it is very deliberate and you can get like a sketch down very, very quickly. Like say this is your face or whatever. <laughs> I find that you can just get the actions down very quickly, whereas I find with the real pencil, it's just a little too faint for me. So those three options are okay, and I might lean towards them. The number one pencil that I like to go to is actually not in the pencil tab, it's in the brush tab. What I prefer to use for sketching is the dense watercolor brush. It lives up to the name, it's very dense. But if you make it a little smaller, you can see that it's very deliberate, very similar to the darker pencil. This one here is the darker pencil. And then this one here is dense watercolor brush. Very similar, right? Where I see the difference is actually in the weight and how heavy you push pen onto the screen. So you can get a really nice thin line, which I find is very useful for getting like all those tiny little details when you're sketching. Example of how thin and how thick the line weight can get. So it has good depth when it comes to the lightness and darkness. Whereas darker pencil, the thinnest line is actually really fat, even if I make it skinnier, a smaller brush, you know? Uh, I know very, very hard to tell, but if I put them right next to each other, so that's light. And then if I press really hard, that's the darkness. So here I've put in a light pressure and heavy pressure. This one here is the darker pencil. As you can see here, although they're very similar, I just find that with the dense watercolor brush for sketching is more my jam because you do get good uh, light strokes and then lots of very heavy strokes without putting too much effort into it. As you can see, just by the names, they are very confusing. Just because a brush has a particular name doesn't mean that you have to use it for its use. That, that's why I'm making this video. Hopefully that clears something up for somebody else who wants to use a better sketching brush on Clip Studio Paint. So in conclusion, the dense watercolor brush is what I like to use for sketching. Okay, so once I've gotten my sketch, obviously you need to start filling it and start painting it. So let's go and move on to how I fill pieces and start painting them. Before I looked up a couple of techniques from other digital painters, I would laboriously go in and fill something in with an actual brush, have my object here, and then I would actually color it in, which is totally fine. And it actually gets like lots of good texture in it that you can build upon. Let's just be a realistic here and use the lasso tool. If I have something that I want to fill, I'll just fill it instantly. It's just so much quicker. The name of the game when it comes to making art is speed. When I block things out and just, you know, choose like a shape and then fill that in, the best thing about Clip Studio Paint is when you are on the lasso tool, it automatically comes up with a bunch of uh, settings here, cut things up, or it just has the instant like fill bucket tool. Not a favorite brush, but a good quick tip of how to fill things up. That way you're kind of more focusing on shape rather than little details. When I have been filling things out with the bucket tool and focusing more on shape. I've just found that I've been working more on the overall composition rather than like tiny little details. So that's been really, really helpful for me. Now, when it comes to blending, go into the watercolor tab. So that is the S button on your keyboard. And what I like to use is the opaque watercolor brush. I kind of go and bounce between all of them because they all have varying weights and how intense they are with the blend. Best thing about Clip Studio Paint is that it has really good blending, like instant blending brushes. So you can see here, look at the absolute minimal effort there is to, when it comes to blending. So if you want, you know, your tones and shades to blend easily and effortlessly, look how quickly you can do it with just the watercolor brush. When I'm in my early stages, I'll normally do the blend everything out and get all of my tones and everything with the opaque watercolor brush. But then a couple layers in and when I'm fleshing out a piece a little bit more thoroughly, I will then bounce around to the other brushes. So that's what filling a piece 
and blending is all about. And those are the favorite brushes that I like to use. Again, the names are very confusing because it's called opaque watercolor. When you think of watercolor, you don't necessarily think about blending. Um, there are oil brushes, but I find that they are a little unpredictable. And I think they're really good for when you want to just, you know, get like lots of texture in there. I think it's good for that. To be quite honest, and this video is more about like realistically the brushes that I use, I don't use the other brushes. I will mostly use the watercolor brushes because I just find that they blend really smoothly, it's really buttery and instant. Okay, so now that we have our fills and a couple of the early stages of getting your tones, light and shades in, now is the time, the fun part, to add all those cute little details that really make a piece a lot more realistic. This stage for me is usually when I add lots of cross hatching into the skin and add lots of, you know, new undertones in the skin to make it feel a little bit more realistic. So I'll be adding like my blues or my oranges or greens just to get all the different, you know, tones that are underneath the skin. This is the brush that I really like to use to get lots of texture because digital painting can look very fluffy very quickly and you kind of lose that beautiful like gritty thick painterly texture that you normally get with traditional paint. So a brush that I like to go back to and I mentioned this at the beginning is I like to use real pencil to add that texture. The good thing is just because it's called a pencil doesn't mean that you can't make it nice and thick or big. So let's just pretend this is a nice little bounce light on this sphere here. And you can see that because the real pencil has lots of like grittiness and a bit more texture, you can just add that in and it adds texture to the piece. So let me just blend that out very quickly. This is just for, as an example, I will pop more examples up on screen where I've used this textured brush. For me, it just disrupts the fluffiness. And then I will also then go in with, you know, just plopping down all my colors and then, you know, putting in the cross hatching in and blending it out. And for me, that kind of solves the problem of digital painting looking super fluffy. So again, the names of all the brushes are very misleading, very confusing, but because because you can just, you know, change the sizes of them, it doesn't mean that you can't paint with a brush that's called pencil. Pencil brush is what I like to use when you're in the stages of adding all those little details and uh, hopefully that will help you with finishing your pieces as well. Okay, finally, we are at the stage where um, got your piece down or maybe during a piece when things are a little bit, you know, coming out of the edges. Let's just say example, let's fluff this up. Just a regular painting tip. Painting is all about making a mess and then cleaning it up. That's why I try and encourage all my folks on Patreon over there when I'm, you know, giving them tips and teaching them all about artwork. I do try and encourage them to work on speed and work on being messy and loose because you can always clean it up. The same mentality I would recommend for digital painting. I think being really quick, getting all of your tones down really quickly and fast with lots of speed and movement adds lots of energy to a piece. I want to encourage everybody to just keep that in mind when you're painting because cleaning up is always a thing that you can do. Let's go to the eraser brushes. For me, where Clip Studio Paint smashes Photoshop and Procreate, I'm like a Clip Studio Paint stan. I find the eraser brushes kill the others. I think they're just nothing compares. So the eraser brushes. Here we've got the brush called Hard. It does exactly what it does. You can see here when I um, cut in into the ball. It has a taper on the end, which is really nice, especially if you need to clean up really delicate areas. It also has the soft eraser brush, which is nice for when you don't want really hard edges, say like on the face or something, it might be a bit of bloom, um, light bloom coming from the back light source. And you just want the jawline to be a little bit softer and uh, not so sharp. That's a really good one. But this is the brush that truly smashes them all. And as soon as I discovered this, this is a godsend. It's called multiple layers. It's this old scary brush here. But when you get like lots of different layers here, look at this massive mess. For example, you're working, you've got a million different layers and you have that one little annoying spot and you're going on every single layer to try and delete it. Well, this brush just goes right in and finds it for you and deletes it. 
So you don't have to go through all your different layers and try and clean it up. It's just instantly there. Sometimes it can delete your background layer, but you just have to have a proper background layer on. For me, this is such a game changer. You know, it means you can just make an absolute mess. If you're like me, I get to in the moment and I'm really lazy when it comes to naming all of my layers. So I'm just meticulously going through 50 layers trying to find it. And now that problem is completely solved. It will delete through all the different layers and now you don't have to waste all that time trying to find that annoying little smudge that you made. Absolute game changer, one of my absolute favorite brushes. All right, you guys, that's the end of the video. And like promised, we are going to head into the Kickstarter campaign just to get a little sneak peek so you guys know what is actually in the mini ramp up Kickstarter. It's a very exciting time and I'm super pumped to launch it and then also deliver all the exciting rewards to you guys. Before I head out, remember to like and subscribe. We are trying to get to 30,000 subs and if you want to support the channel, head over to my shop at zekeslunchbox.com and also submissions are currently open for the November round of Patreon where I do one-on-one -on -one mentoring and training over on that platform and give you lots of good tips and actionable advice on your art career. So head over to Patreon to support the channel as well. Mark your calendars, 25 November. Let's go! Hi, I'm Julia of Zeke's Lunchbox. I'm an artist, designer, and content creator focusing on making colorful and strange artworks. Over the last couple of years, my business collaborator, Julian, and I have been focusing on developing and researching Zeke's Arcana, a tarot deck bringing a colorful feminine reinterpretation of the Rider Waite deck, a tarot deck commonly known as the classic tarot card deck. This deck has been closely documented on my YouTube channel where I've invited the viewers to follow along on my journey of researching, developing, honing my craft, and then finally painting each card. Currently, all 22 major arcana cards are painted and finished, and now begins our next step of this journey. So this brings us to the Ramp Up Mini Kickstarter. As this is the first time hosting a Kickstarter, this round is a way for us to dip our toes in and learn what Kickstarter is all about. About. Because the tarot deck is such a massive project, to ensure we cover all bases, we wanted to take on a Kickstarter project that was smaller in scale and more manageable. All the money raised in this fundraiser will act as a security blanket for when we launch the big one. So what is included in this Kickstarter? First up, let's talk about the gold foil limited edition art prints. We chose The Lovers and the Devil. These two artworks are some of the most famous and recognizable in tarot. We kept this in mind and purposefully designed them to work as companions. Both artworks mirror one another with similar compositions and at the center of the cards you have a devil and an angel. At their feet we traditionally see a man and a woman engaging in worship. Of course, they both have quite different meanings and which one you prefer is down to personal taste. These art prints are limited edition, exclusively available on Kickstarter, not to be recreated anywhere else. The art prints are embellished with gold foil printing and are printed on 300 GSM stock. All art prints will be A3 sized and signed and numbered depending on how many prints are sold during the Kickstarter. All art prints are also stamped on the back with an official Zeke's Lunchbox stamp. Next up, a new venture physique's lunchbox, an exclusive fabric wall hanging. The artwork we chose to feature is one of the earliest paintings made for the project and has remained the most popular card to date. The sun features a bright colorful palette with a cute elephant boy riding his trusty steed with the sun shining down on them. The card represents all good things to come, optimism and abundance, a piece perfect to hang in your space for good energy. The wall hanging comes with two metal rings for easy hanging. This makes for the perfect decor piece to make a big statement with minimal setup. The fabric is lightweight but sturdy and can be machine washed in cool water. Just like the prints, this wall hanging is exclusive to Kickstarter and won't be made anywhere else. The Kickstarter rewards are available in two tiers. The lower tier is the print duo set and the higher tier includes the print set and the wall hanging. All three artworks are curated to work cohesively so they can live in your space as a triptych but are also strong enough to stand in their own in separate spaces. Just a reminder that the Kickstarter platform is all in or nothing. If we don't reach funding, we can't make the project happen. So make sure you back the project and bring Zeke's Arcana to life. Just wanted to say a massive, massive thank you to everyone who's supporting. Really excited to see some more of these come to life and it's just really great to get some help for the final project because it's going to be awesome. 
Thank you so much for backing. See you later.